Previously, we recreated the linothorax, a type of armor made from layers of linen that people like Alexander the Great wore for protection. It was relatively effective at stopping swords and spears and even bow and arrows. We tried a more thicker version of it against some small caliber weapons and was able to stop that. Did not do too well against high caliber. So today we're gonna to revisit this and PUBG challenged us to try and recreate some portions of their power armor that's coming out in their mobile game today. So we're gonna try and apply some modern knowledge to ancient technology to build what can hopefully be bulletproof armor. This video is sponsored by PlayerUnknown's Battleground Mobile, more commonly known as PUBG Mobile. If you are new to PUBG Mobile, it's a multiplayer battle royale game where you and up to 100 other people from around the world parachute onto an island, scour it for loot and weapons, all while you hunt down your opponents. At the end of the day, only one team makes it our live winner winner chicken dinner. The team at PUBG Mobile reached out to us to help them promote the brand new release of Power Armor Mode in the game. In this mode, you have to first collect the different components of the armor. Once you've collected them all, you can engage the suit and all its features. The Power Armor provides protection with its breastplate, enhances strength, and gives you additional features such as thrust and an arm-mounted grenade launcher. Here's some more gameplay showing what the armor can do. PUBG Mobile's challenge to me was to see if I could build one of the components our own unique way. So I'm gonna take some inspiration from some of the past videos we've done, bronze, steel, obsidian, and ceramics, and see how effective of an armor I can make, focusing just on the chest plate. So before I go make it, be sure to click on the link in the description to download the game and check out the power armor yourself. It's free to play. In our video on the line of Thorax, we explored the unique type of armor made from stacking layers of linen together forming a lightweight armored protection from the weapons of the time. We wanted to see if that concept could stand up against modern weaponry, but only the smallest 22 caliber could be stopped by the extra thick, heavy, 100 layer thick cell we made. This left me curious, if you were faced against modern weapons, would ancient civilizations be able to construct armor that could withstand small arms fire and still be relatively lightweight? We were given a little bit of a tight deadline for this challenge, so we're gonna use some modern tools to help speed things along. So start writing your hate comments now. Now that we're in the Iron Age, iron armor seems obvious. But to stop something like a 9mm, you need at least a quarter inch of hardened steel, so that's going to result in something that's pretty heavy. In alternative, let's see if we can learn from the modern concept of composite armor and use a variety of different materials I've previously experimented with and see if we can make something that can stop at least a 9mm round. First, just for a better reference, I'm going to carve pieces of the armor out of an easy to shape substance, styrofoam. Then I can use this as a reference when I make and form the other pieces. Using the styrofoam, I can then use it as a mold to cast bronze into. Trying to get thin pieces of cast bronze ended up being much more challenging than I expected, as the first piece ended up consuming my entire 5 pound block of bronze. So I'm going to move on to some plates of iron for the rest of the pieces so we can keep this thing a little bit lighter. Most modern steel body armor for stopping bullets is usually at least a quarter inch thick. I'm going to use a thickness that is more aligned with the thickness of ancient iron armor, which would be at least 15 times thinner. So I don't think this metal is going to help too much in stopping power, and be more just cosmetic.
Next up, for one of the layers of the composite armor is one of humanity's oldest substances, ceramics. Today, a common form of armor is ceramic plates, which are able to absorb the kinetic energy of the bullet while being considerably lighter than a plate of steel. While humanity has used ceramics for the majority of its history, its use as armor wasn't implemented until the Vietnam War and is composed of extra hard materials like boron carbide and silicon carbide. In our case, we're just going to use a standard clay to see how well we can replicate that stopping power. Next, my old friend, Obsidian. For the smaller one. So for a couple layers of the armor, I want to try and experiment with our old friend, Obsidian, the volcanic glass. So glass has uh, some precedence for being used for armor. Some of the very first forms of composite armor actually had a layer of glass between two layers of steel because glass has better stopping power than steel alone. Rather than just putting a bunch of glass shards all over the layer, I'm gonna try and take advantage of a little phenomenon I discovered when I was uh, experimenting with melting obsidian before. But I figured out ways to melt it down to cast a sword. When you get close to this melting point, it actually foams up, which was cause of like a lot of kilns that were destroyed because it always expands more than you expect and melts out and then molten glass just kind of absorbs everything. It actually has a practical real world use as a form of insulation. They actually do this in the anime Dr. Stone. So we're going to uh, experiment to see if we can uh, crush a bunch of obsidian, layer it in there, and mix it with a few different compounds that kind of help it uh, foam up. Things like uh, limestone and charcoal. We'll also mix in our, our old favorite flux borax. In theory, this should create a nice foamy layer. It's supposed to be lighter and strong and not something that's gonna shatter. Common material used in the real world is fiberglass, which we're kind of trying to replicate that. It's gonna be a little bit different because it's not woven fabric, but it actually foamed, but we'll see how well it works. Let's give it a shot. Then I can combine all the layers together and bind them using hide glue with some leather and linen as additional layers as well.
Now I'm gonna make the leather harness that will keep the armor in place. This armor is a legendary armor, so it's pretty cool. Did you just fart? No, it was a burp. <laughs> Everything glued and bolted together, the end result ended up being a pretty cool rustic result. I could have cleaned things up and painted it, but I kind of preferred the worn in look. Let's go shoot some holes in it and see how it compares with the help of Mike. It's Mike Nielsen from Warfather Training Group, professional firearms instructor here in Minnesota. I'm hopeful that just like the woven armor you guys had me test last time, that the 22 would actually stop, it would stop around of the 22. Um, the nine millimeter, not so sure. All right, first we're gonna shoot it with the 22 long rifle. I'm gonna shoot the uh, bronze panel first and then the steel. Pretty impressive actually, that, bl that bronze deflected it. Wow. So this is just a lead projectile. So it just, it just kind of mushroomed and fragmented. This one gave a nice size dent here, but also protected it. So it didn't even have to penetrate the other layers. Nice work. We're gonna shoot the nine millimeter now. So amazingly, this bronze actually also deflected that nine millimeter. Wow. You can see the copper jacketing. There's some copper embedded right there. With the steel, look, you can actually see, here's the projectile embedded right in the armor. This is just lead. And if you look deep down, you can see the copper projectile, the jacket and the, and the rest of the projectile in there. Did it make it all the way through? It, it hasn't, it's not through the leather. So it did not penetrate. As it was a little softer, had a little bit of flex to it. Because it's actually so thin, it's kind of like holding a piece of paper that's taut, yeah. and it'll just go right through it. I don't know how thick your bronze is, but it seems a lot thicker. So what we have here is a 223 soft point. It's a rifle ammunition. So the big difference here is the velocity is a lot higher. Looks like two pretty clean holes through there. You can really see there's a perfectly sized 223 caliber hole right there. All of your material on uh -huh. the plate uh, is fragmented behind it. This one is the same deal. Pretty clean hole right there I can feel in the leather. Still, I'm not gonna fault you, it's good solid armor. Not bad. At that speed, the heaviness of the projectile combined with the speed just punched right through that surface veneer of armor. Did it penetrate all the way through? Let's see. This one did not. I can feel a bump right behind there. So if you were wearing this armor, it would be just like getting probably a punch in the gut. <laughs> but you, would, uh, you wouldn't have your vital organs you know, perforated. So that's the on the plus side. <laughs> Actually, I was pretty impressed by this armor. The stuff is probably just as effective as your modern 3A soft armor. So, nice work. Thank you to Michael for helping us battle test our armor. Got a few more holes in it. I'm actually surprised, it seems to have performed a lot better than I expected. My goal is basically just to withstand up to a nine millimeter handgun. And uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like it stopped all of them. Um, I'll take it off and inspect and see if there's any extra holes. But I think the only ones that made it through were the shots from the rifle. Let's take this off, inspect the damage. This bottom one. It looks like me through the obsidian ceramics absorbed the energy and stopped it from going through the leather. And for this shot, you can see obsidian absorbed most of the energy. It's mostly obsidian that stopped these bullets. I guess obsidian is bulletproof. It's like it went straight through the metal, but didn't make it through all the obsidian. So that uh, 
Obsidian actually worked. Just a few along the edges of the armor seem to have possibly made it through. It's hard to tell exactly. Yeah, I've already done a number to this guy, so it's hard to tell exactly what's new. I think we relatively succeeded at making an armor that stands up against uh, modern weaponry. At least up to handgun, small arms, nine millimeter. Well, might as well put it on, I guess. All right, so wearing this out, it came out at about 17 pounds, which is actually lighter than the Lenothorax. Yeah, I'd say this is definitely considerably lighter than the Lenothorax was, and uh, would be lighter than just making a really thick piece of steel or iron from this era. So I think we did actually succeed at the main goal of trying to use composite materials that were available in the ancient era to build a bulletproof armor that is actually light and maneuverable. I'm gonna use this as a warm up as we get more into potentially making our own armor in the future as we go back to our, our regular scheduled program. So thanks everybody for watching. See you next time. Thanks again to PUBG Mobile for sponsoring us. If you haven't tried out the game, you should. It's a lot of fun and you'll lose track of time playing it. And with 734 million downloads and counting, you'll be in good company. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.